I was at, uh, can't remember the name of the lake above Baker one time. There's a lake up there and we were having a revival. And I took my whole sound system up there and I was preaching on a Saturday night and as I was preaching, I never even went near the sound system. But the interesting thing was we had the camp host come and tell us to turn it down. <laughs> I thought, am I that loud? <laughs> You're fired. You can't fire volunteers, can you? Uh, when I began this thought, I began to realize just how beautiful heaven's going to be. Just how beautiful it's going to be to finally reach the prize that has been before you and I for so long. How many of you today can say, I've gone too far to turn back now? Many I hear who backslide never knew they were on a road to become backslidden. They never knew that it was right around the corner. They never knew that their heart had waxed cold and that they had become lukewarm in their spirit. But aren't you glad to know His Spirit? Yes, amen. The Spirit, He is a revealer of knowledge that cannot be brought to you in any way other than by the revelation of the Spirit. Some know that as Rhema, where you begin to understand things beyond your intellectual capability. Yes. That's where I want to live, where I hear from Him, I know Him, and not like the sons of Sceva, but I know Him and He knows me. Amen. I began with the point that the bride is a radiant, beautiful bride. Filled with all of the joy that a bridegroom would expect. But how many of you know that marriage isn't always about the ooh-ah? Huh? Becoming one is not an easy thing. Because you have two becoming one. You will become one flesh. But think about the bride of Christ. And how we are still striving for the prize of the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Now think of that. It's not a hard thought process. Striving for a prize we've yet to attain. We're looking... We know that at the cross of Calvary, Jesus said, It is finished. There was finality. It was complete. There was nothing left to be done. And now we sit at a time where there's nothing left. Jesus is going to come. He's going to split the clouds. And the bridegroom is going to come and take His bride away. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thought about our time in heaven. It's eternal. Can you even fathom the depth 
of that word, eternal. To the best of your ability, you say, it will be eternally. But yet, in our minds, we still see the backside of that. No matter how deep we go, can we get to the place to where we can see no end? Like the ring that is a symbol of marriage. You can't find a beginning and you can't find an end. It began somewhere, we know not where. That man, when he started to build this ring, he started somewhere. And as they built the ring, it poured into the mold and it began to circle. And there was a, as you will, wheel and a wheel, but that's a different story. But if you look at that, you'll see that you cannot find a beginning nor an end unless you mark that circle. And isn't life like a circle? We began with him saying, I knew you before you were even in the womb. Yes. But then he says, you'll be with me for eternity. Yes. What a joyous thought that I will be with him for eternity. But there's things that have to still happen before I can get things right in my life because I'm striving. <laughs> See, I used me. Now you can't say I pointed at you. <laughs> Pastor, you're still striving? I'm still in this flesh. I still got a ways to go. And the journey is not for those who are working it fast. The journey is for them that endure to the end. What a wonderful thought we have of heaven. <laughs> In Revelation, if you have your Bible, Revelation 21, these scriptures in 19 and 20 and 21 are some of my favorites, if you will. And uh, I began to look at them and I, I really believe that the maker of all that is and always will be is the one who is also your husband. Amen. Hello? The Lord Almighty is His name. Can you really express that with your spiritual life? The Lord Almighty is His name. Yes. I'm not looking for that which is here already. I'm looking for that which is to come. Like John said, I, John, was in the Spirit on that day and I saw the city coming down from heaven. I'm not looking for a city that's going up, church. I'm looking for a city that's coming down. Hello? Praise God. Praise God. Now, I saw a new heaven Chapter 21, Revelation, not Revelations, it was only one Revelation. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, also there was no more sea. I could preach a message there. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people. God Himself will be with them and be their God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I could preach that any better than it speaks of its own. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. I love that. There shall be no more pain. I really love that. For the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. 
When you came to the Lord, this is what we call a born again experience. Yes, it's an experience where you come to the Lord and those things that have held you down, those things the enemy has used, the things that so easily beset you, when you come to that old-fashioned altar, the Bible says you become a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let me tell you, all things, the heavens and the earth, all that dwell within those things will become new again Amen. Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith continue to follow after him Amen. he will make your path straight yes. you know I love the fact that when I got saved and you got saved there was that feeling that I had that there was vulnerability. As though thousands of pounds were pulled off. The guilt, the hopelessness, the loneliness, all of the things that were there seemed to just vanish. And as the habits and the vices and everything else continued to fall off, things became new. I liked it when I could walk up and have a conversation with a cop or see him do something wrong and say, hey, dude, you can't do that. You see, there was a time in my life where I just looked behind me to see if they were there. And I would always watch continually for them. I don't have to do that no more. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, you live a life <coughs> that God has given. And what if, for instance, you came to a place in your life and you give your life unto the Lord and someone walks up and says to you, what did you gain? What would you answer? I gained all things. I gained eternal life and faith. Well, what if it isn't there? Then I've lost nothing. Now, how many of you today have that kind of a life where you can say to yourself, I'm glad I'm where I am today. Yes, amen. Amen. I'm Amen. glad I'm where I feel the presence of the Lord. I'm glad to know my heart before the Lord is right. I, talking to people, I tell them that there's many people, they either like you or they don't like you. And a lot of people realize that there's issues that the devil likes to use. He wants to destroy family. He wants to destroy your income. He wants to destroy anything that will trip you up and alienate you from God because He knows if He can trip you up, you'll talk to God and maybe in a negative way. You go through a time of desperation and you cry out to God, Why me? Well, what would you want? Him to do it to someone else? <laughs> maybe, just maybe, he's smart. Maybe he understands what you can handle even though you don't. Maybe he understands where you are and the trying of your faith being far much more precious than even fine gold. He's yeah. building in you a new life. Amen. 
He's preparing you for the day when you will come before him and you will see those loved ones. You'll see those friends and maybe, maybe just the sorrows of all the things will bring tears to your eyes. Maybe the pain that has racked your body for so many years has kept you bound. Maybe the afflictions of the soul, the afflictions of the mind, maybe all of those things that have kept you back. It says on that day when we shall see him, the first thing that's going to happen. What did it say? I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And God himself will be with them and be their God. <coughs> be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear. Abolish and take away every pain. <laughs> Think yeah. of that. Are you with me? Amen. Heaven sounding sweeter <laughs> all the time. Because when Jesus went to the cross, the Bible says that He knew our infirmity. He knew the temptations we faced but yet was without sin. Yes. Even though we find ourselves in a place sometimes where we may not feel like we're married, we're still married. Yes. Hello? Yes. You ever look at your husband or look at your... See, I can get away with this today because there's not many women. It's mostly guys. <laughs> You ever look over at your wife and get in an argument and go, I don't like you much right now. She looks at you and goes, ditto. <laughs> You're still married. Amen. Hello? You're still going to be together, but the Bible says don't let the sun go down your wrath. So you go back, I'm so sorry, because they give you the silent treatment. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's why I said it. Hello? Ain't too many men who haven't seen it. I had a man one time tell me, my wife and I never argued. I said, did you even speak to one another? <laughs> we never had an argument? How dull that would be. Yeah. No making up. That's the funnest part of an argument, making up. That's the best part of it. <laughs> Preach it. <laughs> you are all the sons of God through faith in Christ. How do I know that? Look what it says. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, John, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So therefore, if I'm reading to you out of the word and not those things out of my flesh or out of my intellect, I'm reading to you words of truth, words of life. Too many men discern for themselves and give a theoretical point that people fall upon, yet when they gather into it, they've lost the whole track of the truth of the word. You see, that's a place you don't want to go because it won't take you to heaven. Do you know that some people say Jesus is already here? Who's Jesus? Not mine. It doesn't say he's going to step on the ground. It says we're going to meet him in the air. Amen. And people believe it and follow that. Don't be dissuaded by hypocrisy. Don't be turned around by untruths. Read the Word for yourself. Know the Word of God. 
And the Word of God will set you free. Amen. I was looking at it and I was thinking about how many men and women as a bride are puzzled at the fact that their life has become neuter. We're, we're neither male or female in heaven. We're the children of God. Well, wait a minute, Brother Mary. How do you know that? Well, I don't. But the Bible distinctly tells me I'm the bride. Well, that's just a metaphor. No, I'm going to be his children. I'm going to be there. And you'll know me as I am, but you'll know me as I will be. And therefore, we will not have those same issues of life we have now. Things are going to change yes, amen. completely. You say, what are you trying to tell me this morning, Brother Miller? Are you ready for heaven? Yes. Are you realizing what he says? He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Are you thirsty? Yes. Are you hungry? Yes. Are you looking for things of God that are beyond you? Beyond your desires and personal selfish whims, but into the things that will bring life and life more abundantly because He has made all joyful or made you joyful. Now, there's a relationship in our scriptures in Genesis. The thought I'm trying to bring up here, God made us male and female. The distinction is relevant only in our earthly perspective. As far as our relationship to Christ, our position of being in Christ, there is no relevance of gender to Him. Now, if you want to read that for yourself, you'll go to Genesis 1.27, and that will tell you where I bring that to point. So what I'm trying to tell you is Jesus loves us all the same. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. What he began in you and began to do in you is personal to you. What he began in me and he's going to finish in me is personal to me. But it's all for the likeness and the glory of God. Amen. You're new. You're born again. You should walk out of here going, you know what? I realize now that I no longer am bound by the physical because I am living a spiritual life of joy in Christ and I should not be worried. Yeah. Worry is not of God. Yeah. Trust is of God. Can you trust Him? Can you lay it all down on an altar? Trust Him with your most intimate and personal things. And they are things. Can you lay them down on an altar and say, God, this is it. And now I stand before you with nothing hidden. And I understand now that nothing is hidden from you. Yeah. You see, sometimes we think we can hide things from Christ. We do. We think, oh, well, you know, God can't see what I'm doing. God doesn't know where I am right now, so I'll just do this. I'll do that. What about the things we don't do that we should have done? What about the omissions of life? Let me share this with you. 
in closing at 11.30. Not intentional, but do you really want to listen to another half hour of this? I've got about another six hours I can go here if you want. I will. <laughs> but there's things that have become very sincere in the heart of a Christian. You see, sincerity brings forth no hypocrisy. You see, I know that my Redeemer liveth because at the cross where He took away my sin, He didn't just take away the sin of yesterday. He didn't just take away the sin that I commit. He takes away all sin. Yes. Therefore, I can walk in the newness of life that He has given me and know that I have access and can come boldly to the throne of God and worship, adore, and love, and abide, speaking to Him just like I'm speaking to you. Is your prayer life that way? Do you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, you know I blew it today. You see, I found that as a man, I'm just as capable of making mistakes as you are. Whoa. But when I am thinking of the spiritual things, and continuing in spiritual ways, I'm not fulfilling the lust of the flesh because the lust no longer holds me bound. My flesh no longer dictates what's going to take place in my spirit. My spirit's going to dictate what takes place in this flesh. For one day this mortality will take on immortality. Yeah. This corruption will take on incorruption and we will be with Him. Yeah. Your pains no longer exist. Your infirmities no longer exist. Your heartaches no longer exist. The tears that you shed for the unsaved family member. The tears that you shed for those who were hurting. The tears you shed for your own guilts. He wipes away. And never to be seen again. I am... Glad if you have your Bible, verse 26 of Genesis and uh, or Galatians through verse 28 talks also about the gendering of the sons of God. But I'm glad also to know that He, Jesus, is building a radiant church. Yes. A radiant people. You say, why are you using the word radiant? Have you ever met someone who walks in and they have as though a shadow about them? They have somewhat of a dullness and they get up from an altar and you can see that there's a, a change, a, a natural, physical Everything is changed. There's a, a, a brightness to them. A glory, if you will. That's what God is building. A people who are bright and shining. A, a jewel. Praise the Lord. 
precious to God. So now look at your neighbor and go, I'm precious. I'm precious. All these guys are going, how about that football game? <laughs> yeah. You ain't very close to your feminine side, are you, boys? <laughs> Looking over at your brother next to you. I'm precious. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank God I am precious in his sight. He is building a treasure in you. And he finds in you the most beautiful things that even you are not aware of. <laughs> that makes me want to cry. Because he finds in me things that I don't understand. He finds things in me I can't comprehend. And I wonder sometimes... Why did you choose me? And he says, what do you want me to do? Choose someone else? <laughs> he chose you. You didn't choose him. He loved you. Even when you didn't love yourself or love others, he loved you. And here's the real neat thing about it all. He loved you then. And He loves you now. Amen. And He loves you still. Amen. Stand with me. In Eden, God created a bride for Adam, didn't He? Amen. A help meet for him, didn't He? That's what the Word called it. Yes. And you say, well, if I'm a part of the Bride of Christ, if this is what you're talking about, then am I a help meet for God? Of course you are. You are the hand of God extended to a world that's lost and has gone astray and needs to find their way back. You are the hand extended. The help me. Would you bow your heads? There's going to be a bride. And when you see Jesus... You will be presented to Him perfect. <laughs> We're going to be without stain, without wrinkle, spot, blemish. And we're going to be holy and we're going to be blameless. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, unto the measure of the stature of Christ. The fullness of Christ. Every day, you're becoming more like Him. Every day, you're being conformed to the likeness of God's Son. Genesis 2, 18 through 22. And the Lord said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. And in Corinthians, 
we find parallels between Adam and Jesus, between the bride of Adam and the bride of Christ. The first man, Adam, Jesus called the last Adam, the second man from heaven. I believe with all my heart, you are far more than you ever knew you were. As we contend with the thought of eternity, know how much you are in Christ and in humility embrace just how precious you are to Him. Using that humility and in knowing who you are in Christ, realize how many people don't know Him. You are the hand of God extended. Are you so in love with the bridegroom that as the bride you want to help in everything he needs to get done? He can do it without you. He doesn't need you to get it done. He chose you to do it. Therefore, as servants of God, let us be faithful as servants that we might see Him face to face. For the cross of Calvary paid the price that we might be all that we'll ever need to be for Him and be happy. If you're here today, you forgot what it's like to strive. You forgot what it's like to work it out. You've just been going along. You've got the words. You've got the ways. But you don't have the heart. I know I'm talking to someone here today. And it's not me talking. Will you turn your heart back to the one who loves you still? Don't become lukewarm. Don't be cast aside. Be accounted as men. Be accounted as women. Be accounted as the sons of God. That He might be able to do a new work in you. If you're here today, I'm not going to do the old count to three. In fact, you should already be in the altar if God's talking to you on any level. You're here today. Don't hide. God knows. Rest beyond the river. Heavenly Father, the hush of the Spirit and the quietness of the soul speaks volumes of the contentment of the child of God. Thank you for changing our lives 
and continuing to change us every day. We'll go to our homes and come back again. But let us leave with peace in our heart no longer restless, no longer without the calm that you give. For you declare in your word there's still a resting place for the saints of God and we can enter into that rest. As we go to our homes, bless us. Encourage us. Challenge us. That we might be even more in the days to come. Not just for ourselves, but for our brothers and sisters, for those who are lost, for our wives. Leading them As the man of God you called us to be, leading them, helping them while they stand beside us and help us. Taking our rightful place in order and decency before the sight of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.